Okay, so, welcome everyone to a very, very, very unusual video of mine. Um, today I want to showcase something that I'm in the process of building. Uh, if you follow me on Twitch, um, you should know that this is actually Blue Wave Mark II. Um, yeah, <laughs> so what? what's actually, I'll just jump right into it, why not? Uh, what's been happening is I've been building this on my live streams, but... You know, recently it's gotten to the point where it's too big to actually work on uh, during live streams. What I've been doing is I've been trying to use my live streams for more fun stuff, you know, playing games and whatnot, and I've just kind of been silently working on this in the background. Uh, so what I figured I'd do is I'd give you guys just a, a brief um, overview of what it is and, you know, an update as to what I've done and uh, what's left to do on this thing. Uh, so as previously stated, this is Blue Wave Mark II. Um, now this computer really wasn't designed for speed. Initially it was, but not anymore. Um, just what I've done is I've kind of designed it um, with power in mind. I wanted to see just how powerful of a computer I could build. Um, so this has uh, built into it one kilobyte of RAM, um, 16 digital I.O. ports, 16 um, pulse width modulation ports, uh, two BCD ports, um, two interrupt uh, activated ports. Um, let's see. What else does it have? 16 I.O. registers, 23 registers total. Um, yeah, a 16 function ALU. I'm just trying to remember all the stats off the top of my head. Um, serial and parallel programming port on the back here, uh, as well as uh, master-slave control, so you can actually hook two of these things up uh, together, in theory, and they can control one another. Um, variable clock system, so rather than a fixed set of clock cycles per machine cycle, um, some opcodes will take, you know, basically it'll change based on the opcode, so some opcodes will take uh, two cycles, others will take five. Uh, yeah, it's just a method of speeding things along kind of deal. Um, yeah, so I guess let's quickly show you around. So right off the top here, we, you already saw the, um, the parallel, or the uh, programming I.O., um, this is actually machine I.O., so you've got a um, serial I.O. here. You've got the programming I.O. here and address slash data input I.O. here. Um, these are machine flags, machine, uh, machine status flags, uh, as well as interrupt flag inputs. Um, then, of course, we've got the clock system up here. This is all this wiring. We've got the digital I.O.s here, um, and 16 of the pins actually act as pulse of modulation outputs. So these 16 here are controlled via these circuits to generate pulse width modulation waves. Uh, we've got all of them are 8-bit I/O except for these two. These are 10-bit. That's because these are actually uh, actually have BCD capabilities. So if you port it via the BCD counter, it'll output a BCD equivalent of the number. Uh, and then these two ports actually have built-in interrupts. So if there's ever a change in the input data, it'll signal an interrupt. Um, that's actually one thing that I included in this build, which I did not in the last one, is a, um, we have eight interrupts, and I think I've got a sign denoting what they are somewhere. Uh, here, I think. If I can get up, come on, you. So we've got trap, which is the highest priority. We've got um, watchdog interrupt. We'll get to that. Uh, we've got the serial input data interrupt. Uh, we've got the port A and port B interrupt, which are those two ports. Um, and then interrupts 1, 2, and 3, which are just external um, machine interrupts. So, yeah, and then we got a big-ass data bus, which goes all over the place. Um, down below, directly below the I.O. stuff, is the memory. Uh, and like I said, this is one kilobyte. Um, in my last computer, I used 16-bit word registers. These are all 8-bit, but they're partitioned in such a way that certain bytes can be used for certain functions, like for example, uh, some opcodes can be standalone, others will require an additional byte of information, so what the computer will do is it'll actually jump the next byte uh, and grab that information for the opcode. Uh, some will require like, you know, two bytes like the additional information and data, you know, so you can have up to four bytes uh, one after, you know, in sequence, one after the other. So, uh, that's all the memory. Um, and then down here we have the control, uh, machine control. And last time I kind of used a variable machine control. This one's more static, uh, but it does have all of my opcodes. And uh, you'll notice that there's actually five layers. Um, 
and they're all exact copies of each other. That's because of the machine cycle system. Uh, basically, each cycle will need to do a different thing, which requires different ports being turned on and off, so that's what that's for. Um, obviously, I haven't got that hooked up to the clock yet, but we're working on that. And then we have the entire ALU. Now the, or not the ALU, the CPU. This is all the CPU, and that consists of the ALU and the registers and all that fun stuff, but uh, it's all completely self-contained. Uh, we've got about 23 IO red or 23 registers. 16 of them are general purpose. We got a flag. Uh, we've got five uh, address registers. Um, each can be selected independently. We've got interrupt uh, address registers, um, opcode and effects registers, um, watchdog timer, and basically what a watchdog timer is is a timer that's constantly running, uh, and if it equals a value. Uh, if the timer equals the value that we put in this register, then it signals an interrupt. Um, and then we've got a random number generator back here. Um, 16 uh, function ALU here, which is my own design actually. Um, very, very, very fast for what it does. Uh, and extremely easy to use. In fact, it only requires four inputs to actually select the function, which is all back here. And I think I've got the functions listed somewhere, hopefully, maybe. Not sure. I guess not. Uh, I've got them listed in my opcode list, but I don't exactly feel like pulling that out. Uh, but yeah, that's the ALU. It's got four flags as opposed to the ten that I had on the last one. Um, and I believe the flags are right here: carry uh, zero, negative, and less than. So those are the flags that I've uh, I've got. Those are the only ones really that I need. And then, unlike the last one, this one actually has a two-cycle 16-bit output multiplier. So it takes two registers um, and multiplies them together and in the following two cycles we'll actually place the result in registers 0 and 1. Um, so that, that allows us to do multiplication and theoretically fractional multiplication but I haven't exactly figured that out. Uh, we'll figure it out eventually though. Um, and I think that's it in terms of all that. Um, there's there's a lot of functions to this thing, but um, you know it, it's really kind of difficult to to show you without actually running through the machine uh, opcodes or anything like that, which I can't quite do because I haven't got them set up. So that's actually the last thing that I need to do uh, is set up the machine codes uh, in this library and of course hook up all the wires. That's still going to take a lot of effort, um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty much done. So I think from here on out, what I'll probably be doing is just giving you guys uh, log videos on these things. Um, if I ever do a, a project like this in the future with you know massive amounts of redstone, it's definitely going to be um, it's definitely going to be a log um, system rather than a live stream because the live stream's great for like you know blue wave. It was small enough where I could do that in a, in a few months, but this one got out of hand very very quickly. So. Um, I basically just, you know, kind of given up on live streaming it, and so I'm going to be moving to, um, yeah, video logs. Uh, of course, you know, I still live stream, but I just I live stream games now. So if you guys want to check me out, you know, social media, all that stuff, all my links are in the description. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed. I can't wait to uh, show you guys this thing once it's done. I really, really uh, hope that uh, this works because this is a lot of work. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.